The last remnants of the ISIS caliphate that covered much of Iraq and Syria five years ago were reduced to nothing this week, marking a milestone in the years-long effort to put an end to the terror group. Retired Marine Corps General John Allen was once the special presidential envoy to the global coalition to defeat the group under President Obama. He is now president of the Brookings Institution. Good to have you here. It's good to see you again, Mark. Do we call this victory? I think it's a waypoint uh, in the process of eliminating this threat. Uh, we saw that this organization would eventually become a three-headed monster, if you will. Uh, one of it, one of those heads was the uh, core of the organization in Iraq and Syria. Uh, another is the provincial dimension of it today, which is seen in multiple locations around the world. And the third area is, is located on the Internet. So I think that there has been significant progress in, in eliminating one of the principal dimensions of this threat. And I have to tell you, in the last 48 hours, as I have seen the, the final operations uh, unfolding in Syria, my thoughts go back to the thousands and thousands of people who suffered from this incredible, abhorrent uh, terror group, but also the thousands who sacrificed their lives to deliver us to this point. And I understand uh, even a news crew hit an IED coming out of the, the celebration. And so the, the sacrifices of our media in covering it as well was very important, I think, to this whole process. Um, uh, I think that's a, a great point for you to underscore. Um, I want to ask you, the president's language has kind of changed in the past few days. He has declared, you know, victory um, and said he needs to be given credit for it, but also pointed that, okay, there is still going to be a threat online. Um, in fact, he said, well, on occasion, these cowards will resurface. They have lost all prestige and power. They're losers and will always be losers. Um, is, is the Internet the real battlefield? No, there's plenty of uh, fighting still to go on, even in the area that we called the province of core ISIL, where the caliphate was uh, at its strongest. So there the are threats th not gone on the ground in Syria. Oh, no, no. There's still thousands of these folks that are unaccounted for. And I, and I think that we'll, what we will see uh, in both Iraq and Syria uh, in the months to come will be extensive mop-up operations to try to eliminate those elements that have gone to ground, that, have, that will organize in sleeper cells and so on to continue the attack. They haven't given up one iota of their narrative or their obligations uh, or their objectives. Uh, and we're going to see that the, we have to eliminate that, that uh, threat on the ground. And we'll see continued operations, not just there, but if you do a, uh, a connection of the dots of where the provinces of Daesh have been attacking, Daesh being the Arabic acronym, they're clustered in Libya. Ansar al-Sharia is a, is a Daesh province. Boko Haram is a Daesh province. Uh, Ansar bin al-Makdis in the Sinai is a Daesh province. Abu Sayyaf in the Philippines. If you see the cluster of these attacks, this is still quite a virulent and dangerous group, as well as being on the Internet. Well, on the ground, though, in that uh, so-called caliphate in Iraq and Syria, uh, General Votel, the top, top U.S. commander in the sure. Middle East, testified recently, and he said the fighters remain unrepentant, unbroken, radicalized. This is a generational problem, and they're melting away. Mm -hmm. uh, 400 U.S. service people will be left in Syria. Is that an adequate number to take on that threat? Mm -hmm. Well, first, Joe is, uh, G General Votel is exactly correct. He's one of the greatest soldiers we've minted uh, in the United States, number one. Number two, uh, the forces that were there were overseeing the final operations of the SDF, the Kurds and the Arabs that we've been supporting. The 2,000 that the president has that's said he wants to bring That's on. correct. And those forces, uh, their mission was not over for some period of time. Now, eventually, we'd bring them home, and the president is right to want to bring them home. But they were overseeing the essential next phase of this, which is the stabilization of the population. And the paying for that stabilization was happening through our European partners, through the coalition and our allies who've been with us all through this fight. And the, the critical point about what Joe is saying, what General Votel is saying here, is that if you don't stabilize the population and eliminate the basic human causal factors that makes an organization like Daesh attractive, then we, we face the potential for a reflash. So that's something President Trump says he's not interested in doing. Well, that's a problem. Then are we prepared to go back and fight again? I mean, so we've been in, in Iraq now twice mm -hmm. because once we came out too early and the second time we went back because of the, we, we didn't finish the job. And Baghdadi is still at large, well, the leader of ISIS. We'll get him. Your prediction is I will get him. not long. Yeah. Um, I, I also want to ask you on another topic. Sure. Um, this week, there were some memos that became public from the Marine Commandant, mm -hmm. Robert Neller, and they were published, and he, he describes the current deployments to the U.S. border. Mm -hmm. We're talking about here at home. 
um, as really hurting and posing a, quote, unacceptable risk to Marine Corps combat readiness and solvency. Before Secretary of Defense Mattis resigned, he said these deployments were actually kind of good practice. He said they were very good training. Which is it? Are, should we be concerned our military resources are being used in this way? Well, it's, it's both, actually. Uh, the, the wise commander, um, and I would simply say that federal forces don't normally deploy inside the United States. So that's the first unusual dimension of this. But the wise commander who is, is ordered to deploy those forces is going to try to make the most out of that deployment and try to get decent training return on, on that measure. But uh, you know, General Neller is a great Marine. He's been a great commandant. And he has assessed, and it is his moral responsibility mm -hmm. to provide best military advice to the senior civilian leadership of the United States, he has assessed that both the deployments and the costs associated with those deployments will be paid for in Marine Corps readiness. Marine Corps is the nation's 911 force. It has to be ready to go at a drop of a hat. And if we're stuck on the border, mm -hmm. or if our resources are being drained away to be on the border, or to provide for infrastructure development on the border, we pay that price in the readiness of the 911 force. That is quite a warning. Thank you. We'll be right back.